Hi, my name's Andy Freeman and this is this week's Shush. It's 15 minutes to give you some space to breathe, to meditate, to reflect, to think about a theme and this week's theme is the imagination. And we're going to begin there as we start this time with an imaginative journey to a peaceful place. So get yourself comfortable wherever you are, wherever you're listening or watching this. Just ease out any stresses or tensions as we start holding any tension in your back and your shoulders. Scan down through your body, to your legs, to your feet. Anything where you've kind of got any aches and pains or stresses, just let them go. And you can either close your eyes or you can keep them open, whatever you like, but I'd like you to imagine or create in your imagination a peaceful place. Somewhere that's still, where you're safe, where you can be at peace. Might be outside, might be inside. You might be surrounded by things that are people and things that are important to you that make you feel peaceful. You could be on your own. It could be a cottage, a seaside, a forest, a cathedral. Just imagine that peaceful place and imagine yourself sitting there at peace. Think about where it is, why, why have you chosen that place? What's going on there that enables you to feel at peace? And we're just going to spend a few minutes being still and practicing just being at peace. And this time nothing that you're carrying can get to you. You can put that on the shelf for a little while. Your stresses and strains can be put to one side just for a moment. You don't need to do anything other than be still. In your imagination, take in the surroundings that you're in and allow the peace from that place to almost flood you. So I'm thinking of a, a quiet garden, a hammock. The sun's out, there's nothing to do. Bees are buzzing, birds are singing. and I can be at peace. Just take a little bit of time right at the start of this meditation just to settle into that space. we've just done there is a well-being technique that many people use. It was first Carl Jung that emphasised the importance of dreams to the unconscious mind. Our imagination, <coughs> and imagination, imagining better realities, positive futures, peaceful places is a tool that's used by many psychotherapists, counsellors, well-being courses and techniques. It, allows your imagination to see something positive and Harvard's just one of the many places that that's recognized in research that when you think about a positive outcome you tend to then reflect on it more in your everyday life the imagination is a very powerful thing 
Einstein talked a lot about the imagination. He said this, I am enough of an artist to draw freely upon my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited, but imagination encircles the world. He said later it was the preview of life's coming attraction. And it wasn't just him, Oscar Wilde talked about imagination being the place where you can see the dawn before the rest of the world. Imagination allows us to see beyond where we are. But imagination is also life-giving. The creativity of an entrepreneur's side project, the imagination of a piece of art, it brings energy. The imagination to envision a fresh future and sharing that with others and seeing them light up. Imagination in stories, you think of the brilliant storytellers J.K. Rowling, Tolkien. Their imagination lifts you, does something to you. Even the imagination to create a wonderful television series like The West Wing. It inspires something in you from a story. And we found imagination is a wonderful creative tool to bring light and colour where there is darkness. Whether it be through doodling, drawing how you feel, whether it be through expressing things through the creative arts, another language for you to talk about how you feel. And we've used that in many different settings where talking about well-being is hard, drawing it, reflecting on a piece of art, Responding creatively draws something out of people that's different. So today I want to give you a little challenge. Let your imagination loose. Start with 10 minutes and a piece of paper. Draw, write, express how you feel in an imaginative way. Let it be colourful, let it be expressive doodle, draw, and then maybe repeat that exercise a few times. And right now, start by just being aware of what's going on in you. The emotions, thoughts, hopes, fears that sit within you and be imaginative with them for a moment. There's a lot of experts, for example, telling us what the new normal would be. What would you like it to be? There's a lot of people speculating about the future of community, how we work, what our lives would look like. What would you like it to look like? Did you know there were four lines in the government's paper after they talked about using the lockdown that invited imaginative ideas from tech and companies? that might be able to bring something positive into this crisis. Imagination fuels inspiration and innovation. There are a whole load of studies that have come out in the last four years talking about how those imaginative kind of processes grow companies and quite often openness, psychological safety, good well-being are at the heart of those studies. You feel you can be yourself. I wonder what you feel like when I encourage you to be imaginative. Maybe you feel held back. Well, we're going to break the bonds open today. Allow yourself to be you. You declare an imaginative season, an imaginative holiday. Dress imaginatively, create things. Be imaginative in the ideas that you try. Some will work, some won't, that's okay. But allow the light and color of the imagination to light up your world. I am enough of an artist, said Einstein, to draw freely upon my imagination. Allow yourself to be an artist today. This is a poem called Imagine a World, and hopefully this will help your reflection. 
Imagine a world where dreams are no more. Not your sleeping, dozing dreams, but the dreams that fuel vision. The dreams of eureka, of invention. Imagine that dreams are no more. Imagine a world where dreams are no more, not for reason chemical, physical or biological, but the squashing of our dreams. We were told we had no voice and we listened. Imagine that dreams are no more. Imagine a world where dreams are no more, where the Einsteins, Kennedys and Gandhis are gone. They're told, don't rock the boat, don't mess with the system. Imagine that dreams are no more. Imagine a world where dreams are no more, where one day a young woman dares to dream. She imagines the impossible made real. She creates and hopes and comes alive. And that world where dreams are no more is no more. One voice becomes two, three, four, and on, legions of dreamers awake from their sleep. Together they cry, what if? Together they explore, why not? Imagine a world where dreams are no more, then do everything you can to ensure that world never comes to be. We've been really impacted recently by an article called Leading Beautifully by a lady called Nancy Adler. And in it she says this, 21st century society yearns for a leadership of possibility, a leadership based more on hope, aspiration, innovation and beauty than on the replication of historical patterns of constrained pragmatism. Luckily such a leadership is possible today. For the first time in history leaders can work backward from their aspirations and imagination rather than forward from the past. The gap between what people can imagine and what they can accomplish has never been smaller. Imagine a future that you would like. Adler is saying the gap between now and that imagination has never been smaller because we have the tools, the ability, the resources to see that happen. Whether we like it or not, lots of things have changed recently and there isn't a clean slate, but there are fresh opportunities. What kind of future would you like? Imagine it. And what are you going to do about that? How are you going to band together with others to bridge that gap to that reality? Maybe it's an end to homelessness. Maybe it's a new sense of local community. Maybe it's a real and lasting commitment to the NHS. Maybe it's a new environmental goal. Maybe it's more personal, it's about you, it's about family. I'm just going to leave the last few minutes of this meditation free. And I'd like you to think about the future you would like. And how you're going to get there. Phil Ox said this, in these ugly times, the only true protest is beauty. I want this little meditation to be an invitation to you to imagine the beautiful, the hopeful, the possible, and imagine that you have got things to say to that. You have got valuable gifts to bring to that. Imagine that future world and take a step towards it today. And we hope that you and those you love are safe and well. Take care of yourself. 
look after yourself and those around you. And we look forward to seeing you again for another shush next week. Cheers. Bye-bye.